Hey you guys, welcome back. So today's video is gonna be about layering skincare and what ingredients can and can't go together. I don't know about you guys, but I've always thought this topic can be so confusing. There's just so many differing opinions out there. There's a lot of information, but then there's not. There's not a lot of definitive information. So I wanted to compile some information together, put some rules together that I have for layering and mixing skincare. And I, I'm by no means an expert. I am a nurse. I understand skin's physiology. I studied chemistry, but for something like this, I wanted to defer it to the experts. So I reached out to some of my favorite science-based bloggers here, dermatologists, cosmetic scientists, people that really know this stuff. They do this for a living. So I incorporated their advice to me in my rules for layering, but in the end, I'll, I'll give you guys the gist of what they all had to say. And I I think you'll be very surprised actually. So some very exciting things in this video. I also did a little experiment when it comes to layering water-based products to oil-based products. I did a little experiment in my kitchen. I'll include that as well. I love this stuff. I love these geeky, sciencey details when it comes to skincare. I hope you guys do as well. I think it's fun. And another fun thing about today's video, this is a collab with Frugalista Blog, also known as Frugie Blog. In her real life, she's known as Rebecca. She's so sweet. You guys, I'm sure all probably follow her already. I found her a long time ago. She always had, she still does them, these bargains of the week. She always talks about affordable products. She's just easy to watch, fun to watch. She's such a natural. She has such a natural wit about her. She's hilarious, so funny. I love her reviews, just down to earth, real life reviews. Views. So she's great. Definitely check her out. In her video, she's going to be talking about how she layers her products for her sensitive acne prone skin and then also some of her favorite affordable skincare fix. But I will leave all her channel information down below. Definitely go check her out. Subscribe to her channel. She's such a joy to watch. You will not be disappointed. So, all right. So we will, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So like I said, layering skincare can definitely be a confusing topic, but just to put everything in context here, let's talk about what the body is actually made of in relation to our skincare products. So there's some skincare ingredients that are actually skin identical ingredients. So things like when we talk about hyaluronic acid, also sodium PCA, um, squalene is also present in our skin. We also have skincare ingredients that are naturally used by our bodies and actually are required by our bodies for optimum health or for essentially for our bodies to function without these certain vitamins and minerals our bodies could there, different pathological processes could happen different diseases could happen you don't have to worry about this really because our foods are fortified these days but my point being our bodies are naturally designed to utilize all these vitamins and minerals and they should all kind of work in harmony i actually included this little graphic on my instagram page just to put everything in perspective so like i said we have our skin identical ingredients like hyaluronic acid squalene and then these vitamins and minerals that our body utilizes are some of them are also found in our skincare like retinoic acid retinoic acid is a form of vitamin a niacin a b vitamin which is also a form of niacinamide vitamin e ascorbic acid ascorbic acid is our vitamin c and then zinc zinc is a mineral utilized by our bodies needed to thrive and function linoleic acid which is an essential fatty acid or a protein that's found in a lot of our skincare products great for our skin's barrier that's naturally found in our bodies as well. So that helps me to kind of make me feel better about combining these different ingredients because they're designed naturally to work in harmony in our bodies as it is. Now where it gets a little dicey is the fact that certain ingredients require certain pH levels to maintain their stability on the shelves. If they don't have the specific pH, they may degrade over time. So an example of two ingredients that you probably won't see together are L-scorbic acid and retinol. You'll see retinol with vitamin C derivatives and that is because they both require a higher pH, but L-scorbic acid really functions best at a low pH. But don't be afraid of using these two together because there's actually a study to show that vitamin C and retinol work really well together on the skin. You're just not going to see them packaged together. So let's talk about my first rule of layering skincare. Number one, pick one exfoliant in your skincare routine. And when you think of an exfoliant, think AHA, either glycolic or lactic acid, BHA, think salicylic acid, or our retinols. So retinol isn't necessarily an exfoliant, but the side effect is the same as an AHA. AHA actually breaks the bonds in your, the dead skin layer on your skin to help slough off those dead skin cells. Retinol is more of a cell communicating agent to help build up our collagen, but you're still gonna have those same, maybe potentially irritating side effects. So you only wanna choose one in your routine. Now, if your skin isn't super sensitive and if you have built up the tolerance to some of these products, I have heard people being able to use AHAs, BHAs, 
and even retinol in the same routine. I would not advise this, definitely ask your dermatologist, but just start slow, introduce one product at a time so you know how your skin is reacting to that certain product. And number two, when we're talking about layering skincare, go from the thinnest to the thickest. Start with your more watery-like substances, like your essences, your watery serums, and then end with your oil-based products. And the whole idea with ending with an oil is the fact that it's going to act like a wetsuit. It almost seals in all your skincare. It prevents any transepidermal water loss. It just seals everything in. Think about if you have a cup of water and you pour some olive oil into it, the olive oil is going to separate out, it's gonna to rise to the top, and it's gonna create a layer on top of that cup of water. Now for this, I did my own little experiment. So I got a little medicine cup, and I first put in the Inkyless Multibiotic Moisturizer. This moisturizer is very water-based, it's very watery, it's not my favorite because of the thinness of it, and then I layered it with the Seafirm Serum on top. We're gonna to pretend like that's our facial oil because of that oily component to it. I was going to use a facial oil, but for visualization purposes, because of the darkness of the vitamin C, I thought it'd be a little easier to see. Normally, I would apply my vitamin C right after cleansing, so that active ingredient can get right into my skin, but for testing purposes, I use this vitamin C because of that greasy component to it. And I was surprised to see that actually very quickly, these two layers almost became one. They were separate at the beginning, and then the vitamin C and the moisturizer just mixed together. So you can pretty much guarantee you, if you use a light moisturizer and if you put an oily substance on top, most likely that oily substance is going to get through that water-like moisturizer and help get those active ingredients into your skin. And then I also did the same thing with The Ordinary's Reservatrol and Cosrx's Rice Sleeping Mask. This is water-free. It's completely, it's a straight oily substance. It's acting as a facial oil. So I always end with this. This is an overnight sleeping mask. It has a very heavy oily component to it. It has a lot of sunflower oil in there. So it has a thick occlusive nature to it. And interestingly enough, the Reservatrol ended up staying underneath the rice sleeping mask for a good maybe hour or two, and then they ended up kind of mixing together. But the Cosrx sleeping mask did deal this off. So maybe the one situation where I would put a facial oil underneath the moisturizer is if that moisturizer was super occlusive, heavy duty, look at your ingredient list, is there a lot of oils in there, a lot of, a lot of silicones, that's going to determine whether or not maybe you may in this situation be able to put your facial oil underneath your moisturizer. And number three, the one ingredient that is proven to deactivate another ingredient is benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide can deactivate tretinoin, so you definitely don't want to use these two together. I got this information directly from Dr. Dr. Adrienne Chan. She is, she's awesome. She has a really informative Instagram page. She was on the EcoWell podcast, which you guys have to check that out, by the way. Awesome, like no BS information. It gets through all the marketing hype and just talks about the science behind all these ingredients. But benzoyl peroxide was the only one ingredient that she mentioned. Now, another thing, however, she did note it does not deactivate adapalene or Differin, which is another form of vitamin A. So, so benzoyl peroxide is the big one here. Definitely look out for that if you're using retinoic acid or tretinoin. Now, when it comes to mixing other actives, there's really not a lot of definitive rules. Actually, there's a cosmetic scientist. She's very popular on Instagram. I'll link her down below. Her name is Skin Kemi. I actually, I didn't talk to her personally, but I found this post on her page. She she posted this amazing, this super helpful chart that talks about mixing actives. And if you look at it, she talks about niacinamide, retinoids and derivatives, AJs, other chemical exfoliants, azelaic acid, vitamin C, peptides, and arbutin. Again, she's a cosmetic scientist and she basically says you can use all these in conjunction with one another. Now, in the bottom in her little insert, she says you can use them on top of each other by waiting a few seconds between each step. So that brings me back to the vitamin C and retinoid because even though they require different pHs in their formulations, you can use them in the same routine as long as you're giving a tiny bit of dry time in between and then they're maintaining their specific pH. The body does an amazing job at neutralizing itself. It makes me think of, so in the hospital we get blood gases to look at the pH, the acid-base balance of all our patients. If they're on the more critical side, it tells us a lot about how their body is functioning, if we need to change ventilator settings, if there's more, if there's something else going on, like maybe a sepsis infection, it tells us a lot about the body. It's just amazing to see that at one moment, a baby could be upset and agitated, the next moment the baby is calm, and there's a huge difference in the pH values. Point being, the body does an amazing job at balancing itself out, so if you just give maybe a little bit of dry time in between each ingredient, the body's gonna work with that ingredient, help to kind of let the ingredient do its magic 
on the skin and then you can apply the next ingredient. Your routine is up to you. Have fun with it. Skincare is supposed to be fun. And this is pretty much a common theme among the other experts that I talk to. So Kenna, so you, I'm sure you guys all know Kenna. She has an amazing YouTube channel. Super sweet, knowledgeable, really easy to listen to. She's so smart. She's a biochemist. She's worked with, she's formulated a skincare line. She works with ingredient formulations. So she actually said the same thing. There's no evidence about mixing and what's best. She did mention, however, that proteins can be best at a specific pH and that they shouldn't be mixed directly with acids. And when she's talking about proteins, we're thinking peptides. So peptides have basically two different functions. They help to soothe the skin, it really moisturize and plump out the skin. If you're looking for more of the moisturizing capability from a peptide, you can certainly use it with an AHA and you're still gonna get the moisture from it, but maybe you're not gonna get the collagen building capability of it. If you definitely want that collagen building component and if you're worried that it's gonna be weakened by an AHA, just use your peptide serums on a different day than your AHA, but it's certainly not going to be harmful. If anything, using a peptide with an AHA, you're going to get some extra moisture. It's going to help to soothe any irritation that you may get from your AHA. So I hope that clears it up. Not to generalize what she's saying in any way, but again, she's saying it's not dangerous, but it may the peptide action may, may just be weakened from the AHA. Hope that makes sense. So that is Kenna's perspective. And then she also noted that dry down time is only necessary before applying a sunscreen product. So that is really interesting. I will definitely pay attention to that more. And then I also had a DM from Dr. Ginsburg. She was really helpful. She was also on the EcoBalls podcast. She has a farm chem PhD. She's a pharmacist, again, super smart, a wealth of information. So she also mentioned that there's really not a lot of evidence. She hasn't been able to find any studies that actually describe or look at different products and concentrations. And really the biggest takeaway from her is that she says she you always want to put put your protective barrier against UV damage last. So I would advise that sunscreen should always apply last. So again, another expert opinion saying that there's not a lot of evidence on this. And then also Lab Muffin Beauty Science, um, Michelle Wong. She is amazing, super smart. Another, she has a chemistry PhD, wealth of information on her YouTube channel as well. She is really the one that got me into studying the science behind ingredients. She just makes it so interesting and fun at the same time. She's so informative. But she, again, she doesn't really say there's a lot of evidence, um, and she mentions benzoyl peroxide. She says that it deactivates a lot of things. Um, and she really doesn't have a lot of information about copper peptides, but that is one thing that she is, she's heard a little bit of information about as well. So I looked more into this, and there's some really positive studies on copper peptides. They really help in wound healing, they help to produce collagen, help to produce elastin, really great anti-aging benefits to copper peptides. There was one study to show that copper peptides may act Activate the matrix metalloproteinase enzyme. I shouldn't even try to pronounce that. I'm going to put that down below. But that is an enzyme that can degrade or break down collagen. Now, this is one study. Incucoder is another great resource. They kind of put all the research studies together for you, but they mentioned that copper peptides have unique wound healing properties because it stimulates the breakdown of unhealthy, too large collagen in scar tissue, and it stimulates a nice, healthy collagen production afterwards. I'm wondering if maybe that is where the misconception came from with using a retinol and a copper peptide, is this breaking down of these large collagen particles. So that's my assumption, my generalization. There's just not a lot of information out there about it. No definitive studies. If you're nervous about it, if you love your copper peptides and you love your retinols, just rotate, use them in an every other day fashion, and I think you'd be totally fine. But all right, guys, that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please leave any comments down below, any opinions from you guys, especially expert opinions. If there's any experts out there, I'd love to hear from you guys. If there's any journals, any scientific journals where you found any information on this, I'd love to know. Again, there's not a ton of definitive information out there, so you you have to do what works for you. Take in consideration your skin condition. If you're extra sensitive, don't over exfoliate. Even if your skin is tough, over exfoliation is not always a good thing. So hydration is key when it comes to anti-aging. So hydrate, hydrate, hydrate is the big thing. And yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful. Again, leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Check out Fruity Lisa blog, Fruity blog. She's amazing, super funny, smart, so fun to watch, awesome reviews. Check out her channel, tell her I sent you, subscribe, she's amazing. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys.